Tonight on The Readout. President Trump announces he's running for re-election and Shazam, no, now we're going to pursue it. I mean, this is, so it, it, this is something that I think, um, I mean, I, I just, I, it, it, it's obvious that this is a sham. Shazam Fury of the Republicans as they launch an unrelenting attack on DA Alvin Bragg. Jim Jordan's House Judiciary Committee is acting as Trump's Capitol Hill legal team. Also tonight, pack your lunches. Tomorrow is Marjorie Taylor Greene's insurrection field trip to celebrate the people who trashed the Capitol, beat police officers, tried to hunt down members of Congress, and overthrow the legitimately elected government. Plus, the staggering increase in book banning across the country, targeting more than 2,500 book titles last year alone. And what's being done to fight back against right-wing censorship? Good evening, everyone. I'm Jason Johnson in for Joy Reid. And we begin tonight with a curveball in the Trump indictment watch. The Manhattan grand jury investigating the Stormy Daniels hush money scheme met today to hear a different matter. But Trump did what he always does when the walls are closing in. He posts some all-caps racist and anti-Semitic bile on social media, calling Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg a, quote, Soros-backed animal who just doesn't care about right or wrong no matter how many people are hurt, adding, quote, this is no legal system. This is the Gestapo. This is Russia and China, but worse, which is weird because I thought Trump loved Russia. In addition to blowing right past dog whistling, calling a black district attorney an animal and invoking George Soros, an accusation rooted in anti-Semitism, Trump also accused Bragg of doing the work of anarchists and the devil and in a nod to the kind of violence he's already tried to incite by telling his supporters to go out and protest. He shared a photo showing him holding a baseball bat next to a photo of District Attorney Bragg. And a clear indication that the pressure is getting to him, Trump called for the removal of all of the officials behind the many investigations raining down on him. Not just Bragg, but also New York Attorney General Letitia James, investigating his business practices in a civil case. Fulton County, Georgia District Attorney Fannie Willis, who was overseeing a probe in his plot to overthrow the 2020 election. And Special Counsel Jack Smith, and one of the matters Smith is overseeing, the Justice Department's criminal probe of the January 6th insurrection. Trump's lawyers were in court today asking a judge to stop former Vice President Mike Pence from testifying. The day after one of the lawyers representing Trump today, Evan Corcoran, lost a bid to avoid testifying in Smith's other probe into the Mar-a-Lago classified documents. Corcoran is expected to testify as early as tomorrow, and I'm sure we can expect more temper tantrums from Trump since it's likely the Manhattan grand jury will meet on the hush money matter on Monday. Joining me now to discuss all of this is Jill Weinbanks, who served as an assistant Watergate special prosecutor. She is co-host of the Sisters-in-Law and iGen podcast, Kurt Bardella, Democratic strategist and contributor to the LA Times and the best dressed man on set today, and Maya Wiley, president of the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights. Thank you all so much for joining me. I, I'm, I'm gonna start with you, Maya. When I look at all these different cases that are raining down on the former twice impeached president, it always seems very obvious to me that even if, okay, today is not the day he's going to get arrested. Maybe Friday is the day he's going to go. Maybe Monday is not the day he's going to get arrested. But at some point, you have to realize that it, is one of these going to result in an actual arrest? Are they mostly just going to be fines? I can't imagine uh, b between, between the, the, the civil case and the criminal case and the federal treason cases, one of these doesn't result in him in an orange jumpsuit. Well, let's be technical about this. Uh, first of all, it's very hard to imagine there is not an indictment somewhere at some point against Donald Trump. I say indictment because, as we know, there's plenty of public evidence uh, that shows that there's some real cause to think he is going to be indicted as something, Mar-a-Lago being the latest, because when your lawyer is now said, uh-uh, no attorney-client privilege because we think there is a crime fraud exception. That's pl in plain English speak. That means no, baby, you've got a problem, and we think your lawyer has evidence of you potentially committing a crime. And you have a judge saying that. You have an appeals court saying yes, and actually rushing that to happen. So I just want to say that that is very hard to imagine. And 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 these mean two things. So indictment, just want to separate these. Indictment means he's going to face a jury. Okay. Whether he's arrested for it is a little bit different because there would have to be a decision about whether he should be held versus whether he could be free on his own recognizance until that trial. So I just want to 
separate that out. Um, but we know orange matches. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sound of that. Uh, Jill, you know, I wanted to ask you this, because to me, one of the other concerns that I have, whenever we hear about, again, all these trials, all these investigations, whenever there's a delay, right, I and many Americans out there start getting concerned that nothing's going to happen, right? Like, I, I never believed, I, I don't know why we gave Trump that much attention. I mean, he thinks he's going to get arrested on Tuesday. No one's going to do it on Tuesday, because that's the day he said. But here we are two days later, the, 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 the grand jury's met, but they didn't meet about doing something about Trump. Could that suggest that we could be days away from this indictment coming on, or could this just be another routine matter and, and we're still looking at something within the next couple of days? We don't know exactly when it's going to happen. We don't actually even know if this was a delay. Only Donald Trump said he was going to be arrested, and I agree with Maya. There is not going to be an arrest as people think of arrest, which is him being handcuffed and perp walked. He will self surrender. But that's a separate separate issue. So we don't know what the time schedule that the DA Bragg had set. DA Bragg is going on his own timetable. He's not going on any timetable that Donald Trump says to rile up his base. And with a Saturday Waco rally, that's what we should be worried about, even more than the protest that could happen whenever there is an indictment, whenever he has to come in and surrender and be fingerprinted and have a mugshot and DNA swab. Those will happen. I just don't see him being arrested. Much as I would love to hear the law and order music when that happens, yes, we probably <laughs> will be denied that opportunity. Um, Kurt, here's the thing that gets me. So while all these things are raining down on Trump, and, and I, and I, it, 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 it cannot be said enough. 99% of this is his fault. Like, I don't know, if you don't steal documents from the federal government, this doesn't happen. <laughs> if you don't pay off, you know, adult film stars, then maybe this doesn't happen. Results. If you don't try and overthrow the country, maybe you're not, you know, a redneck, or however it is the old joke goes. <laughs> but, you know, these are things that Trump has caused on his own. But what's been fascinating to me is the same Republicans who were screaming, lock her up, and talking about the Clinton Foundation, talking about Hillary Clinton, are out there crying and complaining now. Let's play some sound from Lindsey Graham begging begging for Trump's freedom, and we'll get your thoughts on the other side. I'm begging and urging this prosecutor, don't do this to the country. Don't jeopardize the rule of law for the nation as a whole. There's a better way to do this. We'll have an election about Trump. To prosecute President Trump in light of everything you've just said uh, would be weaponization of the legal system. It would set a bad precedent in the country. It would come back to haunt us for decades. And uh, I hope and pray they do not do this in New York. Now, the weaponization of the legal system, Maya, correct me, you're the lawyer here. I believe that's called the Bill Barr method, uh, where you turn, <laughs> you turn the whole legal system into your personal, uh, your personal use. But, Kurt, what do you think about it? I mean, you know, look, they're going to defend Trump no matter what. Right. But to hear that sort of thing from Lindsey Graham just seems ridiculous to me. Well, it's just downright unsportsmanlike <laughs> when, when people that are in justice prosecute criminals. Uh, wow, well, what, what is wrong with the world the that, that something like that would happen? I mean, the yeah, Lindsey Graham has shown over many years now that he, this is a guy who just has no self-respect at all, and mm -hmm. he's willing to deface himself on national television to defend someone that we all know he can't stand. Uh, if you go back and look at the things that he said about Donald Trump back in the 2016 campaign, I mean, that's the thing about all of these Republicans, from Kevin McCarthy to the folks over on the propaganda networks to Lindsey Graham and Ted Cruz, every single one of them is is on the record at some point or another saying they hate this guy. Yeah. <laughs> and yet here they are expecting all of us to believe that they really care about Donald Trump's freedom. Nobody is rooting for Donald Trump to go to jail more than these Republicans. I guarantee you they are secretly hoping that the justice system does the dirty work for them so that they don't ever have to actually take a stand against their leader. And it's just crazy politics. I mean, think about this. These are people right now who've boxed themselves into a corner in which they have to defend someone who will likely be charged with multiple crimes from paying off porn stars to subverting democracy to trying to overthrow an election. And the so-called party of law and order would have us believe that these are all things that they should be defending. It just doesn't add up, and it's terrible politics. Uh, and they're going to add on top of that, as you put it, a, a field trip to go check out some insurrectionists. Like, what, what are they doing? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Jill, this is the other thing. And, and I, I, I find what Kurt said is very key about this. 
Let's say Donald Trump does get arrested, right? Let, let's say he actually does go to jail, um, you know, maybe for January 6th, maybe for the documents. What kind of jail time would he be looking at? I mean, like, I, I, I know that it's, it's unprecedented to have a president in this situation. I doubt he's going to go in for six months and be doing, you know, upside down sit ups like 50 and come out and prepare to run. We know that's not going to happen. But what kind of real jail time could Donald Trump face either for the insurrection? or for attempting to overthrow the 2020 election in Georgia? Assuming that he would get any jail time, given that he is the former president, and many people believe that with the Secret Service guarding him, he could be in home confinement. Um, but if he were to be sentenced to jail time, he would be sentenced according to whatever the laws are that he is guilty of. Some of them carry five-year penalties, some of them carry four-year penalties, some of the state ones are, you know, misdemeanors possibly in New York. It could be up to a four-year felony. So it's very hard to predict. Now, you could also have him serving consecutive sentences. He has, let's face it, we're all looking right now at the Manhattan DA's case, which at most is maybe going to be a four-year felony. Possibly it's less. But you have Georgia, and there are multiple counts there. Right. You also have the Mar-a-Lago case. You also have the January 6th insurrection case. Um, you also have a rape case in New York, the E. Jean Carroll case. Yes. And you have a lot of civil cases that could bankrupt him completely. Uh, so there's a lot facing him. And I don't know. It's I really can't predict uh, whether it would be done consecutively or concurrently. And one would hope it would be consecutive because these are very different crimes. And some of them go back to before he was even president. And we keep talking about, you know, how important is the D.A. Bragg case? And I think Lawrence um, O'Donnell had the best answer for that, which is, had he not gotten away with that crime, if he hadn't committed that crime, he wouldn't have been president, and we could have all been spared everything else that has followed. That makes it maybe one of the most important of the crimes he's committed. So, Maya, to think that we were basically <laughs> hush money from an adult film star away uh, from four of the worst years of my life and, and most of the world's life politically, it does sort of add weight to a case that otherwise a lot of people would say, oh, well, this is sort of the least important of all of them. When we look at these cases across the board, historically, right, treason obviously is something that's historic, unprecedented, et cetera, et cetera. But if we look at it on sort of a practical level, which of these cases also might result perhaps in changes in legislation? I, I look at what's happening in Georgia, and I think that if, if it hasn't happened already, this investigation alone should lead either to state or new federal policy, where it's like, hey, look, if we have any loopholes here, we're, we're going to pass the law now. You make that phone call automatic felony, or you, you, you make these suggestions, automatic felony, which of these is likely to actually result in some change at maybe a policy level or a structural level in our government, regardless of how the trials turn out? Well, I, I think that's a very hard question to answer, and I'll tell you why. Not because we couldn't look at this and say, here are the laws we have to make clearer so that nobody can argue right. that they went around it, but uh, one is what Kurt points to, which is, for all of the arguments about caring about the rule of law and please don't bust it up by going after somebody who may have broken it. And, by the way, watching what's happening in Georgia, where lawmakers are looking at trying to carve back what a prosecutor can do because of Donald Trump, which is not a pro-rule of law position to take, um, it's not clear that there is actually any interest in lawmaking, let alone, but using it as a political tool to just protect Donald Trump. And I think that's why it's not only hypocritical, it's actually dangerous for democracy. Because one thing, one thing I will tell you as a New Yorker, one thing I will tell you as a black woman, one thing I will tell you as someone who cares about the rule of law and racial justice and civil rights, is in Manhattan, in New York City, over 180,000 people have been, just in two years, 2019, 2020, arrested wow. on misdemeanors. <laughs> and for things like 
selling churros in the subway system, things that did not endanger anyone, right. things that did not endanger our democracy in the slightest, and often people just trying to make a way for themselves and their families. And the majority, like half those people are black. Yeah. And only 12 percent result in an actual conviction. But do we hear anybody running around saying, oh, these prosecutors, here's a problem for the rule of law, is that right. all these people, all these people are facing criminal charges for nothing. Now we have a man in power, who has power, who has wealth, and has corrupted the system and endangered our democracy, but now we want to attack Alvin Brad for being a prosecutor? Come on. Yeah, and it's like, this is the thing, too. It's <laughs> this Republican Party who has allowed George Santos to stay in Congress. Yes, exactly. Who exactly. doesn't want to even talk about <laughs> uh, Jim Jordan's scrutiny about what happened when he was, uh, you know, a, the in The blindest Ohio. coach, the blindest uh, wrestling coach in Ohio. We just had this information. James Comer, in an interview, admits that, that he's been part of some shady things during his time. And it's like, this is a massive criminal enterprise that's masquerading as a political party. They're all about the rule of law when it's people who look like us that's on the other end of it. Right. But you put a white, rich person of power and privilege under scrutiny, and all of a sudden, the justice system is unfair. Yes. We need to look at the power of prosecutors. This is too much. Like, come on, exactly what she just said. It's nonsense. I got to say this, though. Um, those subway churros are very dangerous, and we need to do something about them. <laughs> they can't be used uh, as a weapon. <laughs> can't be used as a weapon. Jill Weinbiggs, Kurt Bardella, and Maya Wiley, thank you so much for starting us off today on The Readout.